this video we're looking at finding binomial probabilities with the graphing calculator. Now the graphing calculator has two functions in it to do this, and so we want to talk about those two different functions. There's a function called the binome PDF, and then there's a function called the binome CDF. All right, so let's first talk about those two things before we get into actually using the calculator. The PDF is going to be when we want to know the probability that something happens exactly. So for example, if I want to know for part A here, the probability that exactly three of the children will have no DMF teeth. So DMF teeth are decayed, missing, or filled teeth. So it's looking for the probability that when we look at 20 children, there'll be exactly three of them in that group of 20 with no DMF teeth. All right, so the word exactly here is a key phrase that indicates that we should be using binome PDF, the probability density function. This PDF is for a specific instance, one scenario. So exactly three have, you know, no DMF teeth, or if it said exactly five or exactly seven, we would use this PDF. Now, if it says something like less than three, that's not exactly three, right? That could be something like two, one, or zero, right? Less than three, if we're talking about a discrete random variable like this one, it can take on values that are two, one, or zero and still be less than three, right? So there's three different cases. For that, we use the binomial CDF procedure in the calculator, CDF standing for cumulative density function. This CDF means we're going to accumulate probabilities. We're going to add together the three cases that make this true. So when is it going to be less than three? When the number of people with DMF teeth in the study is zero or one or two, right? That's when it's less than three. So this binome CDF is going to add those cases together for us. And then we have three or more, and three or more again is going to be three, four, five, six, dot, 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 all the way up to 20, the full sample having no DMF teeth. And again, that'll be binomial CDF because it's the cumulative density function, right? Okay, so that's the distinction. If it says exactly, use the PDF. If it says less than three, more than three, at least three, so on and so forth, it would be CDF. And of course, the three is not important. It's the phrase exactly versus, say, less than, more than, at least, etc. right? So anytime you're going to be adding more than one case together, it's going to be binome CDF. All right, now let's look at how to do this in the calculator. The structure the calculator wants is N, P, and then X. Now, P must be given as a fraction or a decimal, and of course, N and X are whole numbers, right? So N is our total sample, which is going to be 20. Our P is given to us. There's a 25% chance that people will have DMF teeth, right? Or this is a 25% chance that they have no decayed, missing, or filled teeth, DMF teeth, right? So 25% of the 11-year-old population has no DMF teeth. So in this case, P would be 25%. And the X will be the specific value we're looking for. For example, in this case, three of them with no DMF teeth. So in this case, three is our X, right? 20 is our N and our P is 25%. Okay, so let's try to use that in our calculator to see where it's located. We're gonna hit the, turn on the calculator first, then we're gonna hit second and VARS. And when we press bars, we're going to see a bunch of options. You have normal PDF, normal CDF, so on and so forth. Let's scroll down until we get to binome PDF, which in my calculator is option zero. So I'm going to hit enter there. And the calculator is waiting for me to give it N, P, and X. Now, N will go in first. That's going to be my 20. Then comma. Comma is above the 7 key again. The P here is 25%, so I'll do 0.25, or I could enter it as 1 fourth. It doesn't matter comma, and then the x value here in this case is 3, close up my parenthesis, hit enter, and I get my answer. The answer is 13.39%. Okay, very good. So that's my first answer then. There's about 13.4% chance that this occurs. When I grab a sample of 20 children, exactly three of them will have no DMF teeth. All right, let's look at the next scenario. The next scenario uses the same approach, right? It's binome CDF still, and we still do N, and we still do P, and we still do X, but 
a little important note about this x value. We have to remember that this x value is going to be the number we give the calculator, right? It's not necessarily the number that we see in the problem itself. This x value has got to be a value where the calculator will start with that value, get its probability, and then get the probability of the number right below that, and the probability of the number right below that, all the way down to zero. In other words, it's going to take the probabilities from that number down to zero and add them all together for us. So the cumulative density function here is going to take the number we give it, calculate the probability for it and all the numbers below it all the way down to zero and add them all together. So for example, if we want to do less than three, if we think about b, less than three is going to be what? Well, it's going to be zero, one, or two, not three though, right? So we need to give the calculator two so it goes from two down to zero and adds all that up for us. And that's the probability we'll need. So in this case, this will be our x star value basically, right? Our x star value is two. Because in that problem, we want to go from two, one, or zero, all the values less than three. All right, so let's, let's do that in our calculator. We're going to press again the second key. Then we're going to press this vars key. Go down to where we see binome CDF this time. So pass the binome PDF, take binome CDF. In my calculator, it's option A. Then we're going to enter the N again, which is 20, comma, the P, which is 0.25, and then comma, lastly, we're going to enter this 2 for our calculator. Close it up, hit enter, and we get the value 0 0.0913, 0 0.0913, or basically 9.1% or so. So about a 9.1% chance that there'll be less than three children with no DMF teeth. All right, very good. So again, how do we do that? Well, remember, less than three means either two, one, or no children with no DMF teeth. And we started, we gave the calculator two, so it would calculate from two to zero fours and add it all together. All right, let's do the next one, part C. C says three or more, right? Three or more. So if you look at this one, it's going the wrong way. Our calculator doesn't go up, it adds down, right? So three or more is a problem. So for this one, we have to think of this idea. Basically, the probability that it's zero plus the probability that it's one, plus the probability that it's two, plus the probability that it's three, plus dot, 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 all the way up to the probability that it's 20, all that must add up to one. Don't you agree? Because we summed up all the different cases, the chance that there's no one with DMF teeth, one kid with DMF teeth, two, three, or all the way up to 20 out of 20 with DMF teeth. These are all the possible outcomes that could occur. Either we have no one with DMF teeth, one person with DMF teeth, two, three, or all the way up to 20. So what we want is three or more. We want to go from three all the way up to 20. We want this probability. But the calculator doesn't do that. I can't give it three and get an answer. Because if I give it three, it's going to take three and go down, add up to zero, and give me that answer. And that's going to give me part of what I want and a bunch of stuff I don't want. So what I have to do is use a little algebra. I have to subtract this answer from one. So if I do one minus the probability that it's zero plus the probability that it's one, plus the probability that it's two, right? If I do that, I'll be left with all the leftovers, which is the probability that is from three up to 20. And so that's what I have to do. And the way I do that is I'm gonna make the calculator do the part I don't want, which is from two down, and it will do that if I give it two, right? Just like it did over here. I'll give it that answer, and then do one minus that to get my solution. So I can just do that all in one step in the calculator. I can do one minus, then I'll hit second bars, I'll go down to I see binomial CDF. So binomial CDF is there, option A. I'm going to give it the N of 20, comma, the P of 0.25, comma, and I'm going to give it this number, the 2. If I give it 2, it's going to give me the values all the way down to 0. And then because I put 1 minus before it, it's going to subtract that from 1. And we'll get the answer 0.9087 or 0.909. So that is my final solution. So basically a 90.9% chance that we'll have three or more kids in the study with no EMFT. All right, and that's how you use your calculator to do binomial probabilities.